This is Platform Media International PMI Community Events. I'm your sincerely Joe Ehizo de presenting. Tonight we are looking at immigration to Canada. Um, a lot of you have been calling us uh, who are desirous of bringing their families to Canada who have been disengaged because of the distance and, and living in Canada. Your spouse is in, away outside Canada. Your parents are away and you want to bring them in. And you don't know where, how to go, do about that. As a result of that, we have decided to bring in a, a consultant of many years' experience who have been doing this in the community. There's not that person than Ravi. Welcome to the program, sir. Well, thank you, Joe. How are you doing? Very good, sir. Well, <laughs> we are here again. I have to bring all the crucial questions that we address people's yearnings. First of all, we did last time talking about the basis of how to bring people to Canada. Now, let's go to the next stage. Supposing you are a businessman and you want to move into Canada, you have this substantial deep pocket, that's what, let me put it that way, and you want to immigrate to Canada, you don't know how to go about that. Is there a way that people who want to bring in their wealth to Canada, is there any program for them? Uh, yes, uh, Canada has a lot of schemes for people who are business persons, entrepreneurs, investors. Yeah who wish to come to Canada to establish a business, run and operate a business, make good profits, and let the Canadian economy grow further. So there are a few schemes, which I'll just mention, although there are lots of them. Most of these schemes stipulate that if you are willing to invest minimum $200,000 into a Canadian business, and you want to run and operate that business actively. So the catch is they don't want passive investments. That somebody wants to move here as an immigrant, so he wants to invest and he just throws the money into the economy and goes back to his country. No, their idea is that if you move here, we give you the immigration, you invest minimum 200000 and you Actively, actively stay here. Actively run the business. Well, there is no condition that you need to be here for whole of the year because they understand in the global market, you may have business in Nigeria and you still want to operate that business. You don't want to close that down, but you also want to actively manage the business you just opened in Canada. So under that scheme, you can come here and what the government plan is, most of them, that once you are approved, they will give you two years of work permit so that you can come here with your family, with your wife, with your children. Children can go to school. Your wife can be engaged in your business. And then within a period of one or two years, you establish the business, you run and operate the business, and then you submit a report to the government. Well, here are my tax returns. This is business which I bought, the worth so-and-so. This is additional money you put it to take it to the next level. So then your work permit is changed the to the permanent residence visa. But one thing is very clear that business person must have a net worth. Net worth means the total sum value of their property back home, their cash balance, their assets, movable, immovable. So that net worth must not be less than 500,000. So in that case, you have a, a, how, a property in, like, for instance, in Nigeria or Philippines or Uganda, you have other uh, investments in, in outside Canada and the net worth of what you brought to Canada and the one outside is 500,000. Yeah, your net worth should be 500,000, but your minimum investment in Canada is 200,000 200, or more because there are a number of schemes. But the minimum investment is about $200,000 Canadian. Let's not compare it with US. US. Because now US dollars is okay. pretty high. Okay, so permanent residency in Canada is what is equivalent to what is called green card in the United States. Uh, yes, it is called green card in USA. And it is called permanent residence in Canada. Okay, what about under marriage sponsorship? If you get married outside Canada, how what, what does that involve to bring um, to, to come to Canada? See, under 
under spousal or marriage sponsorships, there are two types of applications. Number one is that let's say there is a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, for example, Nigeria. So this person goes to Nigeria and uh, is married to the fiancé or the partner and then he brings his marriage certificate, other documents of the sponsored person. So we start a process to sponsor that spouse. The second option is, let's say, you have that person partner to whom you're engaged or your partner, fiance, or so you invite that person to come to Canada on a visitor visa, okay? And then you get married in Canada, then that partner does not leave to go back it stays here. It stays here and your application is processed from within Canada. Oh. So you, this, your, your wife or your husband who's sponsored comes here, gets a permanent residence within Canada and continues to live with the sponsor. It's not, there's no need for the, that spot, the spouse or the spouse, male or female, to go back. Uh, no. Once no. they get married, they, the they, they, they continue to live here. Wow. Did they know that? Well, so that's a very good one. So um, the, the, and then the, the only ground they need to cover is that they get a, a visa to visit the spouse. And then they come here, get married, yes. and then the spouse does not go back again. Correct. But remember, you know, when you, when you make an application for a visitor visa, it is never 100% guaranteed. Okay? Yeah. It's not that, you know, you plan to get married and you make an application they will just give you the visa. No. Many times they can refuse and they can say, no, ask your sponsor to visit you, get married, and make an application for sponsorship. Uh -huh. Perhaps those who are watching, let them not get, be, be misguided. It is not the case that you say you are going to your spouse to go and visit your spouse to get married and therefore Correct. give me a visa. Correct. No. If you are coming as a visitor, yes. they grant you on that basis that you are a visitor coming to visit here. Yes. And then you get here, you, you and your spouse get, decide to get married. This is And true. you can stay back. No, Th then no you more. can stay back, you can get married and, and then make, get the application. Application. Yeah. make the application. Great. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I wish I knew that. That should have... <laughs> <laughs> now, what about uh, uh, for visiting visa? Some people want to visit Canada. Because like we said, Canada is the best place on earth. People are desirous to visit this place. They don't even know how to... Some people, some people think is they have deep pocket wealth, and therefore they go walk into Canada High Commission or Embassy anywhere in the world, and they say, "Okay, this is what I have. Give me a visa." And they don't get it. They get disappointed. And what are the grounds they need to cover before to get before they get a visa visa to to Canada? Uh, George, a very good question. Now, today is the world of globalization. People move from country to country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, somebody in some country, let's have a choice. He wants to move to England or he wants to move to Australia. He wants to move to Canada. If he decides to move to Canada, he would first like to make a visit maybe, you know, yeah. to see how, how the place is, how's the place is what are the weather conditions, uh, what are the economic growth, what are the opportunities. In that perspective, it is very much desirable to make a visitor visa application and come here. So now I see a lot of people coming from China as a tourist to Canada because China is a huge uh, market yeah. and they, you know, it's become economically very developed. So there are lots of investors and uh, professionals from China who come here just to go around and see. And see. And they all come on a visitor visa. Now, the the criteria for getting a visitor visa is very is a very fine. Now, if they think, if the government feels that you are well established in your country, okay, and you have a business, you have a good profession, you have financial standing, and you uh, have some a good ties back with your country, and you make an application most of the time you will be approved. Let's do that. Ties back home is requires that you have a, a family, you have property that is attractive for you to Correct. go back. It's not yeah. that you just visit Canada and stay back. Yeah. There are things that we give you, that put you under pressure to go back. There's attraction for you to go back. Exactly. So you have to establish that. So you have to prove 
and that you whatever when, proof is required is through paper yes you know you have a network you have a property as you said you have a very good job you know you want to go back to your job once your visit is over now joe there is another category where you don't need all this and that is let's say we have um, a family here and they want to invite their brother or they want to invite their parent or they have somebody in mind to come and visit them they might be having a wedding here yeah. you know or a birthday or a marriage anniversary you know and they want to invite their close relation or a close friend to come and visit so they send a sponsorship to them which is attached to the application okay and presented with whatever evidences you have in such cases your ties are not too important because as with all the sponsorship invited. yes yeah Big. but also it doesn't mean that you know if you have a sponsorship you are 100% approved still we have to make a good efforts that a good and proper application well documented well explained is submitted so that visa officer who looks at it he says okay good i approve let's emphasize that evidence of 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 contacts back home is you have a good job yeah. you have good investment and there's an attraction for you to go back. It's not that you have visited Canada, you get here, you become yeah. a nuisance, yeah. and you don't want to go back home Correct. again. Mission. Canada immigration doesn't like that. That's right. So you have a well-established back home, and you want to come in here. Good job, good investment, yeah. and uh, you don't have good bad financial good standing. standing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Ravi, and um, what if, is it possible for, for somebody outside to contact an immigration uh, consultant here to help? process document if they want to come as a visitor or they want to come on professional skill level. Oh, very much. You know, these days, you know, you just have to engage uh, somebody who's licensed. Make sure that you do not fall prey into the hands of phony consultants or uh, ghost consultants, we call them, who are not licensed. And, you know, you should contact a lawyer or a licensed consultant. You can even go to the website which is the regulatory body called ICCRC. You can Google, you can find out the name of the consultants, and then through them you can select or you can contact me to give you more information, and I shall be happy to... How long it. have you done this, sir? I've been doing it for about 17 years now. Wow. So we're talking to somebody who, is, uh, who has well vast experienced. experience. Yes. And then, so that means whatever we say here can be taken to the bank. Is oh, yes, truth? sure. They, it, it, it's, <laughs> whatever I'm saying here, it can be verified and it's all credible information. I want to bear two testimony to that because like I said, um, you, you helped in bringing my mother-in-law to Canada. And that's that after I personally tried to do that and it failed four times. And I decided to call you, and then that's why you did it under three weeks. And uh, my, my mother-in-law was invited for No, I'm an so glad I was able to help you, but I'm helping a lot of Nigerians. Even today in my office, I had a Nigerian couple, a senior, you know, and I'm helping with their citizenship Platform media is not limited to Nigeria alone. It's international. All Africans watch us. So you can also talk to African audience, and, and they, most people outside in the Asia, so Asian countries. So they, they see you. So you are not limited to all Africans alone. So it's worldwide, right? Yeah, so, so anybody, I, I provide a free consultation. You can also visit my website, which is www.canadaeasyvisa.com. We'll, we'll put that on the yeah, earpiece on the screen. It's very easy to remember. So and how is your response time? If people try to find out information for me, what's oh, your response time? Most of the time, it's within 24 hours, 24 hours. or maximum two days. Okay. Two working days. Okay. So viewers, that's Ravi Dill, a immigration consultant who has 17 years experience and I can say be a testimony, good testimony to his activities in Vancouver, British Columbia, British Canada. Columbia. And he has been doing this. And if you have any questions, call us on our 1-800 number, reach us on Twitter and Facebook and click, click on that tab and subscription tab. So that we get to know you, you get to know us. And that's what we do. Thank you for coming to this program. Well, thank you for inviting me, Joe. I, I hope I'll be able to help more community members from Nigeria. 
and I, I, it will be my pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And I want to wish you the best. Well, so, viewers, you. Dance Immigration to Canada, presented by PMI International on our community event. I'm yours sincerely, Joe Ehizode, presenting. Have a good night and bye. That concludes the first and second editions of our discussions with the immigration consultant, Ravir Deer. I guess you enjoyed yourself and you were able to understand all the process you need to go through while applying for immigration to Canada. But again, we need to advise you for purpose of authenticity and, cl and clarity and for advice on how to go through this. Our viewers outside Canada can reach us on 1-604-781-4622. And in North America, our viewers can call us on 1-800-583-2134. We advise that before you contact the immigration consultant, call PMR for clarity and advice. Have a good night.